Australia's Victorian high country, where to start? The high country is one of those places that every year lures me in. It was one of the first places I began filming content and spent a vast majority of time exploring as my love for four wheel driving and camping grew. Unmatched mountain views, picturesque gorges, rivers and campsites, you will not find anywhere else in the world quite like it. Welcome to the Victorian high country, one of the all time greatest off-road destinations. Proudly supported by Outback Equipment and in part by So this is the helipad, which is probably not quite halfway up Billy Goats, but you get to this helipad area, so you got a steep climb up the start, and then you stand here and you look at the infamous Billy Goats track, which heads straight up the side of the mountain there, very steep track, and it's actually up into the clouds, you can't even see where it goes, so it looks like we're driving up into the clouds again on another track. Doesn't take too long on this track and things do start to get a bit interesting. We've got some nice little steps and ruts here to contend with and it's very steep. This track is a little bit different to Blue Rag I was talking about this morning where it's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, any sort of standard four wheel driver get up here. Billy Goats, you have to be a bit more careful about it. Like it's not extreme, but you sort of, to do it comfortably, you want like a decent set of tires, a two inch lift, a little bit of driving experience. Otherwise you can, depending on the condition of it, be in for a, a horrible day. It's just nice and slow, mostly first gear low range up this whole climb, just picking your lines, using the rear locker a bit here and there. I don't 100% need the rear locker probably, but I normally just use it just to make my life a little bit easier. But I'd say Billy Goats and Blue Rag are the two most famous tracks in the high country, if not close to it. So we've done both of them in one day now, which is pretty cool. They're both famous just because of the views on them and they're just both steep climbs to the top of mountains. So fun out here, I'm absolutely loving this. I love that. It's a nice little challenge. It's not just another like steep, flat, simple high country track. There's some steps, there's some rocks, there's some ruts. It's awesome fun. What better to be doing at 6.37 at night in the high country.
starting to get towards the top now where the spectacular views are but we're engulfed by the clouds so there's no spectacular views currently but it's still awesome to be up here it's so still up in here and it's beautiful and the best thing about doing it this time of day is we have not seen a, another soul out here yet so you gotta love having that to yourself compared to blue rag today which is just absolute chaos there at lunchtime there's cars everywhere As all the clouds there sort of floating in and out revealing the mountains this is no straightforward track this afternoon it's probably the worst condition i've ever driven billy goes bluff like these are decent size rock steps and that it's uh no easy task no simple task just driving straight to the top you gotta work it a bit and pick your lines pete's doing it easy as in the gu but in the nav with the train canopy on the back it's a little bit different We're up the top and you can see absolutely nothing we're just thick in the clouds up here but that is so still and like quiet and peaceful that's insane i can like hear the ringing in my ears it's an incredible view here on a clear day which we don't have but yeah still nice to be up here and that was a awesome drive up to the top we're going to keep going a bit further now because this track continues and then find a camp up here in the trees somewhere and Get a fire going, it's starting to cool down. We have found ourselves a camp. We just, after that billy goats, we came along a bit further and then turned left up towards the pinnacles and then there's a few nice camp spots up here. And got the place to ourselves there's no one else around we're just camped up here in the fog and clouds so we're gonna set up and get this fire going We're getting absolutely engulfed by the cloud and fog up here. It's come in so thick, like, I feel like it's not even that late. It's probably about sunset time right now. So normally there'd be heaps of light, but it's getting very dark in here. Exciting news though, the time of this trip has come for nachos. nachos. Kai's been waiting for this that moment since we left home. Kai's favorite dinner is nachos and tacos. And pizza. And pizza. So we're going to cook uh, nachos on the fire tonight, which should be delicious. You grab into it. Pretty quick and simple this dinner. We're just going to dice up some red onion. Well, I'm going to cry. And some red capsicum. And we're going to cook up that onion and capsicum on the fire till it softens up. Add in some taco seasoning spice mix. And we got a tin of black beans and kidney beans. And a bit of taco sauce. Nearly forgot the corn, add some of that in, just some frozen corn. Right, we'll pull our mix, oh geez, that's hot. Pull our mix off the fire, put it in a plate here, scrape it all out. 
And now that we cleared our frying pan up, we're going to put some nacho chips in there. And scrape some of the bean mix back on top. We're going to use half tonight and then we'll have tacos another night with the leftovers. I'm going to sprinkle some cheese on top of that. Sprinkle a little bit of uh, spring onion or shallots, whatever you want to call it, on top. Is there a difference between spring onion and shallot or are they the same thing? I don't know. Put the lid back on. I'm going to put that on the fire and let that all yeah. um, melt, cook through for maybe 10 ish minutes. Oh, man. You ready for the big reveal, Kai, of dinner? Ooh, damn. It's all cooked and ready. Looks pretty bloody delicious. Just adding some avocado, some sour cream, some jalapenos, extra jalapenos for Kai because he loves them. Oh, and there's our nacho dinner on the fire served. Time to sit back, relax by the fire, eat this. night up the top there near the pinnacles and we sort of slept up in the clouds the whole night really and there was still clouds up there this morning um, it opened up in a couple of moments where you could actually see around you and then we we're sort of above the clouds and we we're listening to thunder last night and this morning so I reckon that we basically slept above most of the rain and storms last night which worked out pretty well for us but then we finally got hit with a little bit of rain this morning as we we're packing up and now that we're starting to drop down, there is a bit of rain around. I think it's meant to rain sort of today and tomorrow and then start clearing up again. So I have to see how we go. We're gonna make follow this main dirt road um, over towards Howard's Plains. And then from there, I think we're gonna drop down onto Caledonia River. Maybe do the Caledonia River track today. Hit Dingo Hill Track, which we're descending down now. It's a quite a long, steep descent here, all the way down to the valley and the Caledonia River, which is what we're going to be doing today. The Caledonia River Track. I have done this Caledonia and Dingo uh, Hill Track maybe three or four years ago in reverse, um, but it has been graded since then. It was graded not long, too long after we did it, so I'd say it's been chewed up a bit again by now. But it was fair few nasty bog holes in that down the bottom here last time but I don't think they'll be here It'll just be a heap of nice river crossings and yes yeah, very steep rocky descent down into the valley here a few spots at the moment we've sort of been in and out of showers here and there but the weather's not too bad out here and there's no wind which is good it's so still and just bit of rain here and there. Made it down the bottom of that Dingo Hill track and then I've just taken a little side track. We're not actually on the Caledonia River track. Wow, there's a lot of tracks going on here. We're not on the Caledonia track yet, but um, yeah, down the bottom of this Dingo Hill one and we took this side track and there's a awesome little camp spot here and then a couple of little waterfalls flowing in deep holes there it's beautiful might even go for a freshen up and swim in there i reckon
You have to take it nice and slow on these crossings because there's a few decent boulders in there that you don't really want smashing into the underneath of your car. So just generally first gear low and idle across these real rocky bouldery crossings. We are on the Caledonia River track now and as the name suggests you're following the Caledonia River and you're just sort of following it through the valley here and you're crisscrossing it multiple times. It's a beautiful area through here and uh, it's like a crystal clear little river and lots of nice crossings but haven't really come across all these bog holes and that that used to be here. I reckon they graded them all out so it's all pretty simple basic dirt road between the crossings now. So we have come across some of these Caledonia River bog holes here, it's a bit of a fair one here to plow into. Put that locker in and a little bit of momentum but nothing too much because it's reasonably hard in there but a good bit of fun. back up onto the range now on this track uh, we came out of all those river crossings and then you head steep back up the other side I haven't really filmed much because it's pretty heavy rain and there's not anything that exciting to really film anyway to be honest it's just a first and second gear low range climb straight up the side of the mountain but we'll keep going and uh, we're gonna try and camp up here at Howard Plain somewhere tonight and uh, grab ourselves a spot and bunker down in this rain hopefully it's not windy up here uh, that was my only concern about coming up here whether that wind picked up a bit but we'll see how we go There's actually a little break from the weather up here. There's a little bit of clear sky out there. I'm not sure how long it's gonna last. We came up past Howe Plains Hut, but there was a big group there because we were considering staying at the hut. So we've just come a bit further up to Butcher Country Track uh, to the start of it. Sort of there, and there's heaps of nice campsites up around here. Camped here before, and last time I actually camped up here in the snow. But pretty chilly, and we're up in the clouds again. Uh, so we're gonna set up, bunker down, get this fire going.
have woken up to some sunshine this morning which is exciting after a lot of rain yesterday we're starting to get a little bit over it um, I didn't film too much last night it basically just bunkered down because ended up just coming in pouring rain and that wind picked up a little bit we went to bed pretty early to try and get out of it and we thought if we wake up again and it's pouring rain this morning <laughs> we're gonna start to get a little bit over it by then because everything starts to just get soaking wet like we packed up in the rain yesterday morning and then set up in the rain last night so this morning we're just drying everything out really and soaking in the sunshine this is where we came yesterday on this caledonia river track and then come up past how it's hard and we camped up here tonight and then today i think we're going to do king billy track onto bluff hut track check out lovick's hut because i've never actually been across here before uh do all that and then maybe cut down here over into this area somewhere um and yeah see how we go maybe camp over somewhere here tonight So we'd pop down and have a quick look at how it hut here because only a couple of k's from where we camped and then we got to head back the other way but the high country is pretty famous for all its huts scattered across uh yeah across the whole of the high country there's heaps of them out here and a lot of people sort of pretty interested in coming and checking them out they all got their own little story and stuff we could have camped in here last night in the rain and there it is there how it Plains hut from the early days and a little bit of information on it there. This hut was built by the Bryce family of Wanningatta in the early 1900s. This is King Billy track we're on now. First time ever doing it. We just descended down into the valley from up the top there at Howard's Plains and then a few nice little creek crossings down the bottom here and then I believe we're about to head back up the other side of the um, mountain. Typical high country track. Mountain, down into some creeks, back up a mountain, down to some creeks again, back up another mountain. little mud hole here to navigate through there is a bit of mud around at the moment after all this rain but they're all pretty simple up that King Billy track which is actually a nice little fun drive in the end and then we've turned right onto Bluff track I believe it is I'll put it up on the screen anyway um, and this takes us up past Lovick's hut and Bluff hut neither of which I've been to so that'll be cool and then you're looking over at Mount Buller and stuff we're not too far from there pulled up at Lovick's hut here nestled in sort of the mountains here it's a beautiful spot we got the whole place to ourselves as well there was a guy here when he pulled up but he's headed off now we're just having a little bit of lunch and 
enjoying it here, but yeah, it's an awesome hut. I might go inside and check it out. This is actually a really nice hut in here. This is beautiful. Nicely set up wooden top benches and seats around here, and it's all uh, kept in pretty good condition. Some of the huts you come to in the high country are a fair wreck inside, but this definitely isn't one of them. This actually would be pretty good um, to shelter from in the rain as well. Most of them have got big fireplaces in them too, and I think people use them for shelter out in the high country when they're, you know, out here and the bad weather comes in and, you know, they're out hiking or on horseback and things like that. Lots of nice campsites all around this uh, hut as well, this side, that side, down there, everywhere. While we are having a bit of lunch here, I thought I'd put Pete on the spot and just go through his GU a little bit because I know people are always interested in, you know, different vehicles they see on the trips and stuff like that. But Pete and I have been meaning to sort of do a bit of a trip together and catch up for a while now. We've, uh, you know, known each other for a little while, but just with COVID lockdowns and all, and all that, it's been very hard to sort of get away. But, you know, down in the high country, I sent him a message, so he just come along to join for a few days on this trip but we'll go through this vehicle. So why don't you run us through a few of the things that you've done to this. I was saying, the first day you got here, I was saying, I just got rid of Demi in the patrol to show me up and then you turn another up Another one few, turns up. Another one turns <laughs> up a few hours later to show me up again. Fantastic. We've done a bit since we bought it. Uh, we bought it, we actually bought it through the auctions, believe it or not, sight unseen. So yeah. it was a bit of a Pandora's box when it, yeah. when it turned up. But, you know, I've, I've been driving Nissan patrols for a, for a long time now and they've always been a, a pretty hardy um, bulletproof sort of bit of kit so yeah. we thought it was a good platform to, to develop and uh, it, look to date it hasn't let us down. We've got some really talented guys that work with us at Ultimate 9 and a lot of it's their handiwork. Yeah. Uh, Steve and Tim and Mark uh, they do a tremendous job. Um, you know the, for an example that front bull bar is designed and built in-house at Ultimate 9. It's a one-off um, that houses a a dual motor high mount, uh, what's called a, a giggle pin. We run a just a standard, well it's actually a bit of a mix now, it's, it was a two inch lift, we've got two inch in the back and three inch in the front just to help out with some weight, with some shocks to match, upgraded all the, the, the usual things underneath, you know, for strength, uh, trailing arms, panard rods, things like that. So you got 35s on it? 35s with some uh, Dirty Life alloy beadlock rims. You know, I'm, I'm not biased to any one product, but these have been an, an amazing bit of kit for us. I've, out of all the trips, I've touched wood. Again, I've, I've never had an issue with them. Yeah. Um, and being beadlocked, I can let them right down if the, the need arises. I, I think I'm sitting on about 18, and that's where they'll stay for most of this trip. Yep. And you got the twin lockers as well, don't twin you? Twin lockers. ARB? ARB lockers. Yeah, air yeah. lockers, yeah. I, out of everything involved in four-wheel driving, I've, geez, they're just magical lockers. Mm. They really turn a four-wheel drive into a four-wheel drive. Yeah. And then up on top, what roof rack is that? It's not one that I've seen before. No, it's pretty, it's pretty cool though. It, again, it came back to the boys um, at Ultimate 9. Um, it, clever bunch of guys. I told them what I was after and they, they managed to, to build something much better than what I could have imagined and you know it incorporates a light bar at the front, we've got some recovery boards there uh, that strap down but it's pretty sleek and I often think you know if you ever did unfortunately brush up against something it might give you some protection to your yeah for sure to your It'll roof. Lean in a um, bit. 35 inch tyre spare that just bolts on the back door there. You yeah got... we put a spacer there you know yeah. it's a bit big so we've had to space it out we've got our UHF radio aerial at the back. Um, threw some flares on just to make sure that the tyres were covered. It's not like a, you know, it's not over the top, just all your basic sort of things and it yeah. does everything you need. We, we try to keep it simple yeah. and, you know, try to keep it. This is the heaviest I reckon I've ever packed and it's myself and my, my son Tommy that's with me this trip and so we're doubling up on everything. Yeah. Um, but usually it's a, it's a pretty light vehicle. Being touch wood, it, it's been super reliable. And I hate saying that because you know it's going to happen <laughs> down the track. Um, yeah. But it, it has been really good. It's just come back from a couple of weeks up in Queensland. You know, we more or less took it off the truck, jumped in it and came up here. So yeah. It's a patrol, so they're yeah, hard, testament hard to, to break. All right, well, I guess we'll uh, keep going. Yeah, fantastic. Bluff hut next. Thank you, mate. It's only about 15 minutes past the Lovick's hut and you come to Bluff Hut. Quick stop to check it out, then we'll continue on our way.
From its creation, Bluff Hut has been used by cattlemen, walkers, horse riders, and more recently, four-wheel drivers. It has saved several lives. After we left that bluff hut, um, we came down the rest of that track and then down 16 mile jeep track. And now we're heading up Bindaree Road up the other side of the valley. But well, we just thought we'd stop in at Bindaree Falls because there's a cool waterfall here. You can actually walk in behind it. I don't film heaps of footage on a lot of these tracks because honestly, like a lot of them are quite basic, you know, four wheel drive touring style tracks nothing that extreme or interesting to film in a lot of in a lot of them so I just film a couple of bits here and there to sort of show what it's like and try and pick out the uh, bits that look nice or a little bit exciting 95% of the high country is sort of touring scenic you know and just nice low range tracks it's not the place to come for extreme four-wheel driving there definitely are parts of it especially back down like closer to sort of Woods Point and the Collar and Jemison and that but a lot of this Alpine National Park yeah quite sort of simple stuff but awesome out here unreal place we're under a freaking waterfall mate what do you call that you're under it it's just never good enough for you is it it's just never good enough sorry and we're in this awesome little Rock cave here, under the waterfall. We're on this King Basin Road, I believe it is, or King Basin Track or something. Uh, it's got a heap of nice river crossings on it and a heap of nice camps along it. The first couple, or well, first few have been taken now. We're gonna keep making our way along it and try and find ourselves a nice camp somewhere along here to set up for the night. found ourselves a nice little camp spot here on the King River. We actually came down a bit of a side track so we're right off the road here which is good and we've got a nice spot here. Got a pile of wood that someone left which is uh, awesome. We actually left a big pile of wood at our camp last night so maybe because we left that there and someone else left us a pile of wood here. Maybe that's how it works. Um, and then we got the river down there too so we'll probably jump in for a swim soon as well. We're going to use the left 
leftover taco mix from our nachos a couple nights ago to make tacos tonight. I don't know if that makes sense. That's touching. We're actually running out of food a little bit. What are we up to now? Day eight or nine on the road and we did a shop. Like I've stocked up on food before we left. Did a big shop but I haven't actually been to the shops on this trip and yet. someone's been eating all the snacks. Yeah, you. No, you. <laughs> You're the one that sits in the car and eats snacks all day, mate. You're the one who sits in the car and drives all day. Yeah, I know. Not eating snacks. Mm. So, so, well, so my point thing. is, my point is, you're the one that ate all the snacks. So. Not like that. <laughs> God, help me. That's a really nice deep hole there just down from camp. Nice spot to freshen up after the day. Cooked up dinner, got that fire going. And had a little bit of rain come in. It's backed off now, but there is still a few spots. So I set that awning up, so I got a bit of shelter there. But have this swim and head up and relax for the night. Spend the next hour or so backing up footage, which is what I do every night pretty much. Um, and then, yeah, maybe have an early night. I'm getting a little bit worn out it's been a big what are we up to now eight nine days out here on the road filming Woken up to a pretty wet morning today. We had a bit of rain during the night and then it sort of keeps coming in bursts this morning. So we're just sort of trying to pack up between the showers now and then uh, head up on out of here. I'd say this will be our last day in the high country. We're keen to go check out Craig's Hut and a couple of things on the way, depending on the weather. If it's just pouring down rain up there, then we probably won't, but we'll pack up and see how we go. Well, we packed up camp and got out of there. It was just absolutely bucketing down, so we decided to skip Craig's hut and that and just head out of here because um, kind of over the rain. We've been sort of in and out of the rain for three days now, and there's no point just going up there in the pouring rain. So, yeah, we're sort of taking the most direct road out of here, Mount Sterling Road down towards Mansfield, and we're going to finish up the trip and head home today. We were sort of going to stay another day or two maybe, but just with this weather, like this rain's just set in again for the whole day, so that'll do us. I reckon everything's soaked, but an awesome high country trip, another awesome time down here. What are we, what, eight, nine days out in the, um, yeah, out in the mountains here. Such a great place down here, you know, love the high country every time we come back and, you know, if you haven't been, it's one of those places you definitely need to get to. Uh, I'm gonna head home now, and we'll probably be home for a week or so, then we might do another trip in the patrol this summer. The other thing to keep in mind with this place is a lot of the tracks are seasonally closed. They're only closed, I think it's like four months, four or five months a year. It's like from the June long weekend through to October or something, so it's not a long time, but there is still heaps open, but a lot of what we did in this video, in these videos, are closed in those winter months. If you want to support the channel, you can uh, head over to the website. We've got heaps of merchandise available over there. We've got some new stuff too. We've got some new stubby coolers and hats and stickers. A couple of cool shirt designs. Um, you can follow along the adventures on Instagram and Facebook. I don't know what my Facebook is, to be honest, because it's just kind of linked through my Instagram. 
for the Instagrams at tiles and I sort of post uh, all the behind behind the scenes stuff from these trips up on there. All right, that's it. See everyone in the next series video or something. Good boy. Add in some taco seasoning. Well, smoke. Very oh, good. Also, if anyone ever needs someone to mix their food, you can hire me for $150 a... I'll, I'll be generous, I'll do a minute. I'll be generous today. $150 bucks a minute, you can hire a car to stay your food for you. Oh, smoke. But there's no smoke allowed, or, he's, or it's $300 a minute. Yep. Yeah. We've sort of been in and out of the clouds, the whole way down this climb. A few spots at the moment. Sort of been in and out of rain. <sighs> oh, it's been about three. This is King Billy track. We're on now, first time ever doing it. We just sort of. <sighs> Little mud hole here. Some of the huts you come to in the high country are sort of a bit fair. And yeah, um... Take this mark back to where it came from Leave me out, this is not mine To carry you with me through